Hey, hey, gamers, Baron Herx here. <laughs> if you remember at the end of the Big Barony review, I mentioned that the game was getting a huge update, but it wasn't out at the time. Well, a couple of months have passed, and it's finally out. To say that this is a huge update would be a massive understatement. This is ginormous, gigantic. gigantic. In this video, I'll be going over most of the changes made. The reason I say most is because there's like 3 trillion new rooms, so I can't really cover everything. Just like the first review, I'll go in order of the zones, ending at the Twins boss fight, and afterwards I'll talk about more specific gameplay changes. The mines are, for the most part, the same as they ever were, with some more interactive elements added here and there. The most notable things are these walls that you can break by simply punching, and these bridge tiles that are placed in specific rooms. The trap rooms have also been changed, so now you'll sometimes find skeletons and humans inside of them, instead of a troll or a gaggle of spiders. The swamp is different in a way that I struggled to describe. It used to be a little more open, with rooms around the edges, but now you can find rooms all around. I think the size of the swamp maps was also increased, but I may be wrong on that one. The enemy pool has also been increased with the rare appearance of trolls and skeletons. The scariest thing is probably when the Potato King spawns, and he has an army of goblins following him, because now you have to deal with them and their tomfoolery. Sandland has had a huge facelift. There's tons of new decorative blocks all over the place. There's also these curved ceiling tiles, which I find interesting because I don't think there's anything else like this in the game. Just like the mines in the swamp, there's new trap rooms and new room generation in general. Other than that, it's still yellow, still full of literal bugs, and a total bitch to navigate. The ruins are almost exactly the same as they were before. Nothing to say here. This place has had massive changes made, all for the better. Before the update, it was rather drab, just a whole lot of purple, and was impossible to navigate if you didn't have levitation. Now, they finally made it wheelchair accessible, by adding these totems on every island. When you slap one of these, it'll teleport you to another. This way, you can actually make your way through the underworld, instead of just having to leave. Now, I do have one problem with this change, but it's not about what was made different. It's actually about what remained the same. See, the entrance to the underworld is in the ruins, and it uses the same room as the Mystic Library entrance. To be able to get to it, you have to be able to levitate at least one tile to get into the room. Do you see the problem here? They made the underworld navigable without levitate, but you still need levitation to actually get to it. I know this is optional and that you can get to the underworld from the swamp, but I should still be able to do it later when I'm more powerful, without needing something that, unless I'm playing a specific class or race, I'm not guaranteed to get. Anyway. Hell has been entirely upgraded from what it once was. It honestly looked fine before, but now it looks a hell of a lot better. These buildings really look like... buildings. With slanted roofs and spires adding a sense of life here. There is also more detailed terrain, mainly rocks and what looks to be cobblestone paths. The size of the hell maps was also increased, I'll explain why in a minute later. The Baphomet fight is the same, which is fine by me, he's a tough motherfucker, but when you run past all the demons and minotaurs and hop through the white portal, the game ends there. Before, you would return to Hamlet, just like if you had killed Herx, but now, it gives you a different cutscene and ends the game. Now, I'm not sure if this is because I was human or because I was in single player, because when I played with some friends, it took us through to Hamlet. When I did the single player run, I checked and I didn't have classic endings on, so I guess this is how it is now. I'm guessing they made the hell maps bigger because it's technically the last area of the game now if you go the hell route. Anyway, Woo! Hamlin is the same, Crystal Caves are the same, Citadel is the same. Secret levels, everyone's favorite. We'll go through them in the order that they appear. The gnome mines now have an exit in the starting room, as well as a sign written by the gnomes instructing you to leave. Mine Town is the same as before. The jungle temple is the same as before, except for these roof tiles showing the sky. The haunted castle is mostly the same, but now there's a bunch of land around the actual castle, as well as this upper area here. Sokoban is the same. The minotaur maze is now structured differently. The minotaur will not spawn until you take the red orb, which is now right past the starting door. And to get gun near, you need the red orb to act as a key. The layout of the maze has been changed as well, with some levers needing to be pulled to go through. There are also speed potions placed at some of the dead ends to make getting away from the Minotaur a little bit easier. The Mystic Library, Cockatrice Lair, and Bram's Castle are all the same. And now for a lightning round of the other changes that are more specific. If something was changed and I didn't put it here, it's because I forgot. The lighting is better. Named enemies now all have their own unique model. Rats, slimes, and spiders all have attack animations now. Spiders will actually spray you with webs now. The HUD is completely different, as well as every interface, including merchants. Appraisal is now connected to your perception set, so if you have negative appraisal, you can't appraise anything. You can now kill yourself. Every shop has a different symbol, so you know what one it is from the outside. You now need the push buff to move boulders. And to cover my ass for anything I missed, and many more.
And that's it. Pretty much everything you need to know about the quality of death update for Barony. I do believe this update is really everything a Barony player could ask for. The game has been massively improved and now looks less like an operating system and more like a video game. I highly, highly encourage you to buy this game. Now that the update is out, it's twice the fun for about the same amount of money. It also launched on the Switch. It has crossplay functionality between that and the Steam and Epic versions of the game. Now before I go, I must announce something. When this channel hits 500 subscribers, which it's close to getting, I will be opening up the Willis Cord. That's right, you can talk to the guy that made the classics such as Random Christ Maneuver and Average Fed. You must feel elated. It will be public, no paywall. Yeah!